Welcome back to The Mix. Now with school back in session, there might not be anyone home to make sure the furry family member is hydrated. And that's where the Arizona Animal Welfare League who is here with us to give some tips on to make sure our pets are hydrated. And this is what we're seeing, Kimberly, is again, school's back in session, the dogs are so used to having someone, or your cats are so used to having someone at home taking care of them, getting them water when they see the, of course, the, um, uh, the little bowl, you know, dry or anything like that. But also, it's not just about when no one's home. It's even when someone is home, you gotta make sure they stay hydrated. Yeah, definitely. You know, depending on the size of your dog, um, they need an ounce of water for every pound they weigh. So a dog like Jed, who weighs around 50 pounds, needs 50 ounces. If they're not very interested in water, you wanna find some um, unique ways to make sure that they're getting hydrated throughout the day. And it's kind of interesting that you think a dog would because they're out there and you see them panting that they're gonna go eat to water, but really they don't. What sometimes they'll do, they'll go eat, which is not always good for them if they haven't had the water, right? Yeah, and you know, they might get to distracted with toys or if they're outside playing, they might not think about it. So you want to make sure that you're being uh, mindful of that and creating those situations where you can give them these treats or make sure that they have water available. Yeah, and one, one easy way is right here. This is so easy to do. You just pop this water open. These little portable buckets are, I mean buckets, um, portable uh, bowls. Of course, bowls are really cool, especially if you're going on walks for camp or anything like that. Look at that. And, and that literally holds eight ounces of water. And that's pretty much what you should be giving a dog each time, right? Yeah, and that's a great one to bring, you know, just have in the car. And all you have to do is bring a bottle of water with you and fill it up and make sure that they're getting that when you're out walking or if you're out shopping or anything with them. You want to make sure that you have that available. Yeah. My dog loves ice cubes. Yeah. Biscuit, I, I, if an ice cube falls on the floor, it's he's got it and he's going all over. So I love this, that you have some really cool frozen treats that can work well and also to keep them hydrated. Yeah, some dogs just love ice cubes and you can just put regular ice cubes in their water or them as treats but there's also you know some fun things you can do as well so yeah let's what do we have here oh they're sliding off what do we have here <laughs> um so a fun sweet treat you can do for your dog is take seedless uh, watermelon and blend it up with uh, water and freeze that and it's a nice sweet treat for them to enjoy um you can also take pet friendly broth you want to make sure that it's dog safe like this one um and you can Put it in like a silicone mold. There you go. And you said something very important. People, please, please realize this, that dogs' bodies are different than human bodies. So even though you're like, oh, it's chicken broth, let's put it in there. No, you got to make sure it's right and also the food too. Yeah, you can find this at your local pet store. And um, yeah, you just want to be mindful because a lot of our broths that you would get at the grocery store have a lot of seasonings or extra sodium that you don't want to give your dog. Yes. And another way around, people, do not eat the dog broth. So, I mean, you could if you wanted can to. You? I don't know. Oh, because we used to feed my sister actually dog bones. So, love you, sis. <laughs> she didn't know. She thought it was just cookies. <laughs> and another um, fun thing too, you know, if you're, um, you know, when it's really hot outside and yeah. you might not be able to get out for a walk, you can create a fun puzzle um, hydrating treat for your dog, and you can put some wet food in it. Um, and then some dog treats or even fresh chicken that you make. Um, you can do one with chicken's only ingredient, or you make your own um, chicken. Yeah. You freeze it up and then you can give one like Jed's having right there. And he is, there he goes. So let's talk about, of course, uh, Jeb, because Jeb is available for adoption, right? Yeah. Tell me a little about him. Give yeah, me. so Jed is about six years old and he's been waiting for his forever home for about a month or so. And we think he would do great as a family dog. He would do good with children of all ages. He possibly can have a, a dog companion as well. He would just want to meet them first. And yeah, if you want to meet uh, Jed or learn more about him, you can go to our website, awl.org. Yeah, and of course, uh, it's, um, uh, Nicole. Nicole, thank you, Nicole. Oh, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole. I want to ask you because you've been having Jed here with us. He's pretty, he's pretty tame, pretty easy kind of to work with. Oh yeah, he's super easygoing. He's a great guy. He just likes to hang out and sniff around and now eat this treat. Eat the treat. <laughs> there, I like that. What about beer for dogs? What's going on with beer? So the beer's not for dogs, okay. but it's uh, <laughs> raising money for uh, our cats and dogs at home uh, or at our shelter. And you can, um, we partnered with Walter Station for them to create a custom beer for us. It's called the Ale Wagger. Um, and we're having a launch party this Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at um, Walter Station in Phoenix. And you can come enjoy our custom beer and help raise money for uh, homeless cats and dogs. Oh my goodness, and look at the, I love the can. That is awesome. This was specially done for you guys? Yep, so they designed it for us and it's featuring uh, AAWL alumni who've been adopted. 
I love it. That is awesome to get. And then it will be available or just at the... Uh... Yeah, so you can um, buy it on tap or you can buy a six pack and it will also be um, at different locations around the valley as well for Great. you guys to enjoy. Okay, let's remind people about hydrate and just some of the quick tips to make sure that they do keep the dogs hydrated. Yeah, so make sure um, that for every pound your dog weighs that they're getting that ounce of water. And don't forget about cats too. You can create a fun frozen treat for them as well. This is a little churu stick that you could stick in the freezer and it creates a little fun frozen popsicle for them. And what are the signs look for for pet dehydration? Yeah, so um, a good sign is if you picked up their um, kind of skin and it doesn't go back right away, that elasticity, that's a sign that maybe they're dehydrated, maybe their nose is dry, they're panting a lot. Those are signs to keep an eye out for and make sure that you're giving them enough water if you're spotting those. Yes, and it's okay to get them enough water, you let them out and they relieve it outside. My dogs are doing it inside. We won't talk about that right now. I'm trying to re-break them with that. They like have drink the you know, the water and stuff. So this is great. Kimberly, please remind people uh, where they can have more information about keeping the dogs hydrated, also about the great event and where they can adopt the dogs. Yeah, so visit AEWL.org to learn more about our adoptable animals and about our upcoming event. Um, we also have some um, good blogs and different education materials to help you um, with your cats and your dogs. Perfect, I love it. All right, thank you, Kimberly. Yeah.